Welcome to Lessons for Life, where we seek to learn, love, and live the Word of God. Now, here is James Long, Jr. Hello, our passage for today is Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, there, there's so much today talked about with this idea of identity and identifying who you are. And uh, the world has been making these claims about your identity is found in, in so many different things. Uh, maybe it's your, your race or maybe it's your ethnicity Maybe it's your uh, state that you live in. Maybe it's um, the jobs that you do. What? Where is it that you find your identity? It's one of the uh, key questions that I tend to ask my clients often is, who are you? And it's interesting that when you talk to people about who they are, they identify themselves often by the roles that they do, uh, that I am a man, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a professor, I'm a pastor, I'm a counselor. And so what they do is they identify themselves in that way. But the problem with identifying ourselves with a role is that that role may be taken away. That role may end. And then a person finds themselves devastated because they are basing their lives on a slippery foundation or a foundation that won't last. Well, well, God tells you who you are. He tells you your identity. Um, in, in scripture, it tells us that we've been created by God. It tells us that we have fallen in sin, but if we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are, we are adopted. We are justified. We are redeemed. We are being sanctified. We are in the process of being glorified. There are, there's so many incredible identities that we find. And, and one favorite passage of mind is, is found one favorite passage of mine is found in Ephesians chapter one. And Paul begins his book by talking about what your identity is. And he, he tells you who you are and whose you are. So, so listen with me as we look at this passage, Ephesians chapter one, he says in uh, Ephesians chapter one, verse three, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who are the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Did you hear it? He talked about your identity. And he, he, I want you to think about this, that every element of salvation is a work of God. God the Father planned it. We see that in verses 3 through 6. Jesus Christ, God the Son, provided your salvation. We see that in verses 7 through 12. And then the Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Spirit, is the promise of your salvation. So the Father planned it, the Son provided, and the Holy Spirit is the promise. And we see that in verses 13 through 14. Paul looked at nine blessings that we've received in Christ. And I want you to see them here. In, in verse 4, he says he chose us. It's an interesting word. Uh, the verb he chose us means to pick for oneself. God chose for his own sake. He chose us for him. 
amazing that you are so special in God's sight that he chose you. Second, he adopted us as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ to himself. And we see that in verse five, we get to call God daddy. We get to call him father. Amazing. So he not only chose us, he adopted us, but he also blessed us with a glorious grace. Verse six, he redeemed us. Verse seven, he forgave us in verse seven as well. Micah said, who is a pardoning God like you? Well, God forgave you all of the sins that you've committed, past, present, and future, if you are in Christ. He lavished on us all wisdom and insight, verse 8. In him we have obtained an inheritance, verse 11. He has sealed us, verse 13. And he guaranteed our inheritance, verse 14, in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is given by God as a pledge to the believer's future inheritance in glory. My friend, when, when you think about your salvation, there's only one direction that you can go with your thanksgiving. And so there's only one direction you can go with your praise, and that's towards God. And were there days when it feels like somebody has stolen your identity, your identity has been robbed from you. I want you to hold fast to an identity that never changes, an identity that is unbending because it is based on the perfect work of Christ provided for you by the Lord Jesus Christ, planned for you by the Father in heaven, and promised for you through the work of the Spirit. Hear this over and over again, and let this so saturate your mind that you find rest and peace in your soul. Blessings. This has been Lessons for Life with James Long Jr. We hope you've been blessed. For more information, go to jameslongjr.org.